Welcome to Conversations in Integrative Medicine. In this module uh, one, I'm going to talk about uh, arthritis as module, module one of a couple of modules talking about joint health. Now, um, arthritis is such a common disorder, and we see it routinely on a daily basis in clinical practice, and perhaps as many as 50 million Americans have some degree of problems with uh, symptomatic arthritis, um, varying from very mild symptomatology through to severe crippling disability. Now, the commonest form of arthritis is osteoarthritis, which is typically being described as the degenerative form of arthritis. Um, is it a degenerative form of arthritis? Well, it's a disease of cartilage. And certainly the hallmark of this disorder is degeneration of cartilage and a pathological process that uh, really results in restriction in joint mobility, pain and stiffness. But in the osteoarthritic patient, we sometimes see intermittent episodes of inflammatory reaction. So the old classification where we talked about osteoarthritis is osteoarthrosis implying that there was no inflammatory basis to it, I think is a concept that should be uh, discarded. I think that there is a clear inflammatory process within osteoarthritis. And in fact, you know, we see changes in synovial fluid, we see changes in the synovium, in the superstructure of the joint with muscle wasting, we see soft tissue problems, we see ebonation of the ends of bones, and we see new blood vessel formation or angiogenesis in some cases of osteoarthritis and other types of arthritis. So the idea that osteoarthrosis exists, again, should be discarded and we should think of this disorder as we think about other underlying chronic smoldering inflammation. Now there's no question that there's primary osteoarthrosis occurring for reasons that aren't always clear secondary osteoarthrosis, obviously second to joint injury or previous joint infections or associated with other diseases or secondary to trauma, bone fractures, you mention it, a whole host of different circumstances. So that's the background there and I'd like to now switch to the less common forms but still quite common forms of arthritis which are the inflammatory arthritides and the archetypical example of course is rheumatoid disease and I prefer terminology rheumatoid disease rather than rheumatoid arthritis because in fact rheumatoid disease is a systemic disorder um, often the most obvious manifestation is inflammatory arthropathy most specifically in small joints initially in the hands but throughout the body in general in more severe cases now there's no question here this rheumatoid disease falls into a spectrum and category of what we've considered to be autoimmune diseases and rheumatoid type disease is seen in things like systemic lupus erythematosus and we see mixed inflammatory types of arthritis in uncommon conditions such as scleroderma. Now we have metabolic forms of arthritis uh, such as gout caused by hyperuricemia or calcium deposition types of arthritis um, which obviously we need to be uh, clear about. Now one caution and that is in general a very good clinical clue here if you see monoarticular arthritis think medical emergency because single hot joints really require emergent or emergency medical intervention because that may be a joint infection. So please be very careful. You can see it in gout sometimes, but if you see monoarticular hot joints, think infection. They are urgent requirements for treatment. So there's a little bit of background from the clinical perspective and we've talked mainly about osteoarthritis but let's talk about mechanisms of joint damage. I talked about cartilage erosion. 
Um, so proton morphogenic or anti-inflammatory agents have been useful uh, in what we call the phenomenon of chondroprotection. That means protecting cartilage, chondrocartilage protection. And in fact, the stars in that area have been things like glucosamine and perhaps to a lesser extent, uh, things like um, uh, chondroitin, chondroitin sulfate specifically. Uh, those are natural anti-inflammatory agents, but they're also mucopolysaccharide substances that are the building blocks of healthy cartilage. So undermining cartilage is a big issue. Uh, some emphasis has been placed upon uh, inflammatory mediators propagating arthritis, especially leukotrienes, and that brought in the idea that there are anti-inflammatory natural substances out there like boswellic acid found in um, uh, obviously boswellia serrata, a, a member of the muckle gum family of trees from India a close relative of that family, in fact, are Google steroids, which have anti-inflammatory effects like Boswellia, but also appear to have cholesterol lowering ability or the promotion of a healthy blood cholesterol to be politically correct when it comes to the description of dietary supplements. So we've got multiple mechanisms here. Obviously, uh, the, the release of enzymatic uh, substances that damage joints is important and looking at actually the use of enzymes in soft tissue has been neglected somewhat. We have pretty good evidence that bromelain is good for a soft tissue injury or bruising. And then of course we have this promotion of angiogenesis in joints and people have talked about using natural angiogenesis inhibitors and there was at one time popularity for the use of things like shark cartilage or bovine cartilage for health uh, promotion. There are a number of uh, other agents that have been used um, that have uh, somewhat undefined mechanisms but generally have an anti-inflammatory effect. Certainly uh, omega-3 fatty acids have been suggested as quite valuable in affecting things like joint lubrication and being important uh, in perhaps rheumatoid disease for the anti-inflammatory actions of icosapentaenoic acid. So I'm moving away from the typical model and what I want to talk about in subsequent modules is a very important area that crops up in routine clinical practice. And I want to talk in uh, considerable detail about non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs and see how these drugs have impacted the clinical course and history and uh, complications, notably iatrogenic complications, that we see in people with arthritis. So I thank you for listening to this introductory section, and we'll cover aspects of uh, joint health in uh, more modules of discussion. Thank you.